In the investigation into the Air India Flight 171, new Ram Air Turbine Rat development timestamp data is now finally revealed from the AAIB preliminary report. Based on calculations, I will show you how to extract this and settle once and for all when did the rat deployment actually occur. I've also upgraded my sacred timeline slide for you and improved it to show precision time scale of the full 32 seconds of the plane crash to help you better see at a glance all of the milestones and timestamps. In previous videos, I showed you that the RAT deployment had occurred at 080842, which is right when engine one cut off, but that's not possible. I, don't, I no longer have confidence in that because it really requires both engines to be cut off in order to trigger. So we're changing that here. So if we look here at the Boeing 787-8, so this is the actual still frame but I added this text of Air India Flight 171 as it took off a few seconds later after liftoff. So what we're trying to figure out here is how high is this plane? As you can see here, the Ram Air Turbine, otherwise known as the RAT, is fully extended right here at this point. This right here is the screenshot that the AAIB gave us in the preliminary report where they said that they noticed that the RAT was already deployed here at this point. So if you remember in the preliminary report, they had given us this picture and they had the circle around the rat saying, here's the rat in extended position. But read what it says in their verbiage. It says the CCTV footage obtained from the airport showed the Ram Air turbine getting deployed during the initial climb immediately after liftoff. Now, of course, everybody's focusing on this word right here, immediately. Does that mean half a second? Does it mean right as the nose is lifting? Does it mean possibly a few seconds later, like this picture right here? When does that mean? I'm going by their verbiage. So anyway, what we need to do to determine how far along into the liftoff is this, and we can actually calculate this because the length of a 787-8 is 186 feet, right? So we can use this, the length of the plane here, close, you know, fairly approximate, probably within a foot or so of the length and, the, you know, the height that it is from the ground. So I'm going to grab my little measuring stick here that I've made. I made it to be the same length of the plane. All right, so I'm going to measure our height down to the ground. Now, the runway is right here, right at the bottom of it. So this is where the plane was taking off from. You can't just determine the altitude of how high this plane is by the nose. And that's because of potential errors due to the, the wind tunnel effects and all that around the nose. And for the same reason, you can't do it at the tail. So where is the actual height of the plane then? So it turns out the height of the plane then is going to be where the static ports are that determine your pressure altitude. And so usually those static ports are located right here on your fuselage. And it makes sense because I've seen estimates that pointed at about 40 feet beyond the, the nose here. Okay, so knowing where they are on the plane, I'm just gonna put it probably somewhere around this point. So the altitude of the plane should be measured right here then, somewhere in this area. Since we know this is 186 feet, what is this point? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put this here like this and say that's going to be the point right there. Okay, so we have 10 segments here. So it looks like it's about 10% off of the, the max height of 186 feet. So we have 186 times 0.9. So that's our altitude of the plane is now 1. 67.4. Okay, so we have now established that the altitude of the plane taken right at that point is 167.4 feet. And why this is so important that I went through that exercise there is because once they start releasing altitude values, it's most likely going to be quoted from these, these static ports. So now knowing what the angle of the plane is and knowing what the altitude is, and we know what the speed was when it was taking off. And we can incorporate all of these into a formula and we can help determine how long after takeoff was this. Okay, so here's my assumptions to calculate really how long it's been since liftoff in this photograph. So there's our aircraft. We know that the VR is 155 knots. That was from the preliminary report. An initial climb rate is typically 2,500 feet per minute or 42 feet per second. And of course, they're Pitch angle is normally 12 to 15 degrees nose up. That's typical for your climb out. And then altitude, we know that it was 167 feet as I calculated on the previous slide. 
So when you plug all of these in here, the really the time that it took to get to 167 feet is the altitude that you're at divided by the climb rate. So as it turns out, it's 3.98 seconds or approximately four seconds. Now this is pretty monumental for us because this tells us something here. This tells us that the rat was deployed on this flight four seconds after liftoff right here. So that's what this screen grab is telling us right here, that this is four seconds after liftoff. You've probably watched many videos on this plane crash. This is the very first video you've seen that tells you what timestamp this picture was taken at. Supposing you want to challenge me on this and you don't agree with me that I'm saying that the photograph is showing that it's four seconds since liftoff, which would be this point right here, because here's our normal climb line right here. Supposing you think there was an issue with the engines already before takeoff, and so now you have a degraded climb. Well, it won't be such a degraded climb, all right, because you can't have that much of a degraded climb because the plane had a pretty good climb out anyway. It was a normal looking climb out. So supposing you had a degraded climb here of 25 feet per second instead of 42 feet per second. That's this line right here. This would take you out to about six and a half seconds as to would be that time that it took to hit this blue dotted line, which is 167 feet in altitude right off the runway. As you recall, it says the CCTV footage shows that the rat getting deployed during the initial climb immediately after liftoff. So again, we don't know what immediately means. They obviously have the full video that shows when the rat started to deploy. So did it deploy here? Did it deploy back here or back here? Or was it still rolling on the runway when it deployed? But the report says the rat deployed after liftoff, and they got it from the video. If the rat deploys back here, it means there was likely an electrical issue because they would have known that there's something wrong with the engines, right? Because the engines would not have been able to thrust up or anything if there was already a problem with the engines. It reached VR, and it took off perfectly. This was a, this was a textbook takeoff here. Doesn't look like there's any problems here. But you know what? It doesn't make much sense that the rat would deploy on the ground. Why? Because if it was from an electrical failure, the rat deploys, as you can see here from the manual, it says if you have all electrical power lost to the captain's and first officer's flight instruments. So if that happened, they wouldn't have even taken off. So that's why a lot of these things kind of cancel each other out. A lot of people were saying maybe there was an electrical problem on the ground. No, because they wouldn't have seen anything because their screens would be off and then what if you lost all four of your emps in an, and an engine fails on takeoff that's a possibility there but this wouldn't happen on the ground and remember folks i got this right here directly out of boeing's official flight crew operations manual this is the fcom 6.20.3 that shows you all of the possible scenarios which would cause the rat to deploy so you see, this is what has everybody stumped because every possible scenario somebody comes up with of when the rat deployed, you could almost say it's it seems improbable it would have deployed at this time. Okay, so anyway, what did happen at this time, at this four second mark here after liftoff, that would have allowed us to say, yes, it was indeed making sense. So what this is really telling us here is that this screenshot that they gave us in the preliminary report was taken at 8.08 and 43 seconds because this timestamp right here is four seconds after liftoff. And this is exactly at the time when engine two cut off. So you can see the rat is either deploying now or was already deployed. We don't know if it was deployed back here, back here, back here, or back here. But I'm willing to bet that it was deployed right around this time. Okay, and now this you'll find interesting because ChatGPT has an expert database on just about everything. And it knows everything about aviation and flying and commentary. And what I did was, here's my query that I gave it, my prompt. I said here, based on the AAIB preliminary report that I uploaded to you and all the expert commentary available online regarding this, what timestamp do you think the rat was deployed? And so it goes on here and it talks about its analysis and it mentions these key points here. So engine one cut off at 808.42, engine two cut off at 808.43. And this right here would be the conclusion that I came to on my previous slide that I showed you where we were calculating how long after liftoff was that picture taken. And then here it shows, you know, when the hydraulics kicked in about four seconds later. So it says here the rat deploys automatically only when both engines are off or lost. Or if you have 
no APU or other electronic hydraulic sources that are active. So it says, given this, the trigger condition for rod deployment was only fully met at this timestamp, 8.08.43, when both engines were shut down. So then you take the rat spin-up time, which is four to five seconds. And I know a lot of people are arguing online that it's eight seconds. You know, it might be for other airplane models and other companies like Airbus. But no one has come to me with a bona fide Boeing data sheet that specifies the rat time. So it could be up to eight seconds. Who knows what the actual spec says. But here it says this aligns with the rat being deployed at 808.43 and then the hydraulics recovering at 808.47. And then as I showed you on the previous video, this is another explanation here is that if the engine two cuts off right here and you start losing your hydraulic power right here, it didn't go all the way down to zero before the rat kicked in and then boom, shot it right back up. So it recovered fairly quickly. So chances are you didn't have a full discharge of all of the hydraulic pressure. So that's why it would recover quicker. Okay, so here, ChatGPT says, the final assessment, the rat was almost certainly deployed at 8.08.43, the same second the second engine was cut off, triggering automatic deployment logic. This is consistent with the FDR timing, known Boeing rat behavior, expert discussions in online forums, historical precedent from similar dual engine loss incidents. And so at least in, in this case here, ChatGPT seems to agree with my new assessment here of when the rat deployed. Okay, so here is my new and improved model of the sacred timeline. And responding to most of your inputs on the scale yesterday, I was able to do everything here to scale so that the entire 32 second flight is shown here. So this is the timeline going across the middle. And each one of these blocks represents one second in time. So starting at the beginning, you have the liftoff at 808.39. Three seconds later, you have engine number one is cut off at the time that it reaches the maximum speed that this plane has reached during the flight which is 180 knots so this happens at 808.42 and then one second later engine two is cut off at 808.43 and this is now the new timestamp that we are saying that the rat deployed and if it wasn't deployed already and i know a lot of people think maybe it happened sometime in here or even before liftoff but if the rat wasn't deployed already, it certainly had to have deployed by this point in time because everybody knows there's no dispute that once you have both engines cut off, the rat is going to deploy no matter what. You know, in previous videos, we were saying it was happening here, but now I am saying it is happening here, and this is a much higher degree of confidence in this stamp right here. And so if it happened here, of course, engine one is now already winding down. And then engine two starts to wind down. So the rat kicks in here and it takes four seconds for the rat to start to supply power to the hydraulics. So by time you get to 808.47, the rat is now supplying the power to the hydraulics. As I've mentioned before, so the issue here is that if the rat deploys right here and the hydraulics really hadn't started to drop a whole lot here, because look, you're right here at this point. And if the rat deploys and starts kicking in after a few seconds, it's going to start supplying the power. Now, I know a lot of people are fixated on that eight second number, but that might be from other planes. So if, for example, let's say that engine number two turns off right here. And about a second later, the rat starts to kick in. Well, where was it at that point a second later? It's still at 80%. And that's even if this graph that I made here is correct. This is just sort of a pictorial graph that I made for you. The reason why it was able to get everything back up and running so quickly was because it didn't drop that quickly to begin with. Okay, so hopefully that settles that argument for everybody. And then over here at 808.52 is when they switch engine number one back on. And of course, everybody was asking, why did it take nine seconds here for them to get around to switching engine one back on if they were doing a reset or for whatever reason? Well, there's two reasons that I've given here. One of them occurs right here because this is where we think they had that conversation where one pilot says, why did you cut off? So we know it had to have happened after the engines were cut off and before the engine was switched back on. So they had this conversation somewhere in here. And so this conversation ate up a few seconds plus whatever else was going on. And now the other pilot has to think, well, what's, what do I do to switch it back on? I'm gonna go right over here and do this. So that can take about nine seconds anyway. And then the other one here, which many pilots have left comments 
on my previous videos here telling me about the startle effect. The startle effect is very common in aviation and this is a phenomenon that occurs when you see something that your eyes just can't believe what the heck just happened and it takes you a few seconds to process it and figure out what to do and you're panicking during that time. So that's what this is right here. So there's two possible explanations as to why it took them that nine seconds to turn engine one back on. But anyway, they turn it back on and then two seconds later, the APU door opens. And then two seconds after that, they switch the engine two back to run. And then some people were also asking, well, why did it take four seconds to t from the time you turn the first engine on to the second engine on? And that hopefully will come out in the investigation. So my hypothesis here is that you turn the first switch on and you see if you're getting a positive response and then you go and you turn the second switch on after that. They just spent the, the next nine seconds here in this area here doing what we call aviate, navigate, communicate. So you're just trying to fly the plane. And then finally at 8.09.05, they do a mayday call. And then six seconds later, the plane crashes down. So this is the sacred timeline here. And all of these timestamps were pulled directly out of the AAIB's preliminary report. So the only item here that's suspect here is the RAT deployment. It could have been deployed anywhere in this range, really. But if it happens before this point in time, where engine two is cut off, it had to have been electrical because it only deploys when both engines are off, if it's an engine issue. So that's why I'm putting here as the probable time when it deployed. If it deploys any time before this, like in here, it's got to be an electrical problem. So as I showed you here before, if it happens at any timestamp between 808.43 before engine two cuts off, then it's got to be one of these other symptoms right here. And any of these could probably happen on the ground, except for, let me see, one of these was only during approach. So I think this might be during landing. So I'm expanding it off the beginning of the flight here to show you something. So here's where liftoff occurred. And remember, I'm planting my flag right here. And with all confidence, I am now saying that this time right here, 808.43 is when the RAT deployment took place because it happens right after engine two and engine one. So both engines are cut off. That satisfies the requirement to trigger the RAT deployment. This is that kind of unknown area where everybody here is sort of talking about. So this is where I say it deployed. We were saying before that it deployed here at 808.42, one second earlier. Some people still think that. Some people think it triggered here at liftoff without giving any evidence why. Others think that it triggered way back here, four seconds before liftoff, while the plane is still on the ground at VR speed of 155. And some people think that it happened here at V1 speed. And some think that, hey, it could have been way back here while it was back on the runway, just taxiing even. So it, that's why I have it shaded like this. So the closer you get to here, the more probable it is as to when the rat actually deployed. But keep in mind that the preliminary report says the security camera video shows that it deployed after liftoff. So that's why I don't think it could be in any of these regions right here. And then I made this other chart here for you, the timeline of key events that just makes it a lot simpler for you to get an at-a-glance view without the distraction of all the colors and everything going on here. This just shows you the milestone moments of this 32-second flight. Okay, so you can see I've planted the new flag now, and I believe that the RAT deployment occurred at four seconds in. And I hope you like the new sacred timeline slide. I hope that's useful for you in helping you see at a glance the whole 32 seconds of this flight and all of the milestones and the timestamps and how everything relates to each other. It's a lot easier to read now. So anyway, thank you for joining us today, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.